This is Mary Phillips. And this is Ken Townsend. And this is the Worship Cafe Inspirational Radio Show. On WCIR Network. So this week we have a, a guest who is a musician, and he's done many CDs. Um, he does his own original music, and he has a heart and a passion for the Lord. His name is Michael Batista, and we're so excited to have him with us. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. We're excited to have you from California. Um, would you be willing to start off this sh- um, program with a prayer for the audience and everything? Sure. Father God, I just thank you for this this opportunity and just uh, this moment that we have together to just fellowship and um, just lift you up, Lord God, and just thank you and be grateful for everything that you've done. Lord God, I just, I'm thankful for everything you've done through me musically. And I just pray you would guide this uh, interview and just every word that comes out of my mouth is of you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for that prayer. Um, Michael, I'd like to just talk to you about your music and how God brought you into this and your ministry. So how did this um, how did this start in your life? Where did God plant this into your well, heart? <laughs> so, wow, that's a long that's a yeah. huge question. Um, I'm not sure where, where to start from, but because um, there's twofold kind of thing. I mean, I was born, I came with the Lord at 17 years old. Awesome. I've been playing music actually professionally with my father since I was 12. Mm-hmm. And um, he had an Italian band, Sicilian band. Uh, he used to play Sicilian weddings, things like that. I was a sax player first, played sax, started playing jazz, classical. That's cool. And then, his, and then his music and stuff. And then when I was 15, picked up the guitar and started playing with the guitar. And then um, 17, when I was coming out of rehearsal, some some kid just or a rock band I was in and this kid said hey do you want to um, listen to your Lord and Savior and I'm like well I'm, I'm Catholic you know <laughs> and he said and he said, yeah that's cool but you need to be born again you know and so we talked he said sure I got saved mm-hmm. so I gave you a little Bible a little Gideon Green Bible you know, I don't know if you remember those if you've ever seen those but, the little and, ones uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and so I read it and I was like wow this is amazing this is like the truth if, if everybody lived like this the world would be different you know mm-hmm. it would be amazing Anyway, so I just didn't really have any, and then I, then I, you know, later on, I, I kind of, I started going to Calvary Chapel, North Coast Calvary Chapel, Calvary Chapel Church that's in uh, San Diego. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing music, writing music for the Lord here and there, but, you know, it never, it never stuck, and, you know, it was just, uh, just life, and I fell away, and it's a long story, a <laughs> really long story. <laughs> so, and, um... Let's just because right, I'll be we'll be it'll take four hours to do this if I explain it all. Oh. So anyway, <laughs> I, I finally well, you, you, you can tell I finally, some detail. I finally fell away from ninety five for a long time for like fifteen years. I, I didn't just fall away; I became an atheist. Yeah, and got and got into the new age movement and everything, and just did and did every single thing there was to do in the new age movement: tarot cards, mm-hmm. you know, reading all kinds of weird readings and uh, spirit guides and just crazy stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, literally became an atheist. I did not believe Jesus was God anymore. That's there fascinating was to me. Did you feel like um, did did you did you really feel connected to any of it, or did it well, lead was, you any way, or? When I first started, I was just, I had so much, you know, before then, I had so much pain from the past from yeah. a lot of different things. And so I was looking for, I was kind of, when I started getting into relationships with women, you know, yeah. all, the, all these issues were coming up surfacing, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I was in the basket case. And so, um, you know, I, tried, I, I went to that to try to, to see if I can get any help and, and get um, answers. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only the, the nigga long, you know, just to put it, the, the bottom line was that I, I learned that I could not find my identity in anything, any person, place, or a thing. That's one thing I didn't learn. Awesome. And, uh, but they didn't give me who to put my identity in. And they did. It's consciousness, you know, a, a cloud that's like floating in the sky, you know. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically. They, and, right. you know, they, they spoke some truth there, but not the whole truth. So. Right. But really, right when I came to that, that – because I used to put my identity into women and into being Italian – into my music, into, you know, whatever, you know, anything that would make me feel good about myself, my self-worth, mm-hmm. I put it in, you know, I put my identity in, but none of that stuff lasts, you know, so mm-hmm. you always, it's, it always, it only lasts for so long and then you're stuck empty again, you know, going, mm-hmm. okay, now, now what? So you just keep switching identities until you, you know, 
And I know that feeling pretty well. Yeah. So <clears throat> one day I was dating this girl. It was 19, It was basically 2011. And I thought we came from aliens because I was watching. I didn't think. So. I mean, I thought I was watching ancient aliens on the History Channel. We were, you know. I yeah. Said, hey, maybe, we came, maybe we came from come from aliens, you know, because I ruled out religion. I ruled out New Age. I ruled out, you know. I ruled out people, human beings fixing us. You know, I ruled that out because mm-hmm. it was like forget it. humans aren't going to do it. You know, mm-hmm. hey, maybe maybe aliens. You know, and um, she got mad and she said, uh, "Well, you can pray to your little green man. I'm going to go pray to him. You know, which is God." And she she pointed out. I pointed out there is no God. You know, mm-hmm. I, was really, I was really mad. Right. So. um she left. Three days later, we made, you know, we kind of made up. Start talking again. Because once you ask God who he is, and I thought, what a concept, you know. So one day I went to bed. I said, God, are you the Jesus? Are you the God I used to believe in 20 years ago? And if you're not, will the real God please stand up? That was my exact prayer. Wow. And I was kind of, kind of cynical, too, when I prayed it. Yeah. It was and, honest, uh, though. <laughs> I was definitely honest. Right. And then I don't remember a week later, two days later. I don't remember how far much later, but I was on this Facebook and it, 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 I saw a post that said, you know, 50 celebrities who, celebrities who sold their soul to the devil. And I'm like, the devil? People still believe in the devil in 2012? This is March 2012. Yeah. March 18th, 2012. Yeah, yeah. So I clicked on it and it takes me to this you know, YouTube video, Who Killed Michael Jackson? And... Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I thought that was an accident, and blah, blah, blah. And it starts taking me into all the Illuminati and the New World Order, one <laughs> more government, all that stuff, yep. you know. And I, I'm, I'm like, what? You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it t- starts taking one video that led to another, you know how YouTube does that. Mm-hmm. Then it starts taking me to anti prophecy stuff, you know. Right. And I remember the Bible. I remember the book of Revelation. I remember the book of Daniel. Stuff, I remember all that right. stuff, you know. Because right. God just brings it back to you, you know, just bing. And you're like, <laughs> Oh yeah, this stuff. This stuff is real, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. This is actually happening. I'm like, I thought it was just a bunch of you know stories, you know. So, um, make a long story short, I just woke up. I literally just woke up. God just lifted the veil off my eyes, and I was back with Him, you mm-hmm. know. And in my own living room, nobody around, no no preacher on TV, nobody talking right. telling me about Jesus, nobody, right. zero. And I didn't say a word. I didn't, you know, say the sinner's prayer. I didn't do anything. I was just back. Just my eyes were open, and I was—I just said Jesus for the first time in my life you in faith. fifteen years. And Jesus as my Lord and Savior, not just Jesus as a right. as a good person that lived two thousand years ago, you know. And it wasn't as a result of the stuff I was seeing. The info it would—he got my attention. Yeah, it was a result of him just finally saying, "Okay, you're ready." And he took he the got a hold of you. And, because when if you're when you're I mean, you're not in God's protection, yes, Satan can make you believe you're a frog, and you'll start you will start hopping around. Mm. No doubt about it. You know what I'm saying? And yes. so that's that's the deception that's going on today. That's why people are so lost today in our society. Well, there's people searching. literally people are sitting there thinking they could be. I was telling my friend they could be holding a cup of coffee in their hand, and they're saying they're saying that's not a cup. That's not a cup of coffee. And that is not. A, and it's you know that is not a cup. In fact, there is no cup in my hand. <laughs> you know and and people are like yeah you're right you know that's what's up you know, like today you know uh, we have definite yeah. definite signs of, of gender and people are questioning it you know questioning who they are you know mm-hmm. so that's the devil that's the, that's absolutely demonic that's what happened everything. to me yeah that's what happened to me and then god took that veil off my eyes and i could see it and you yeah. see you know i think it starts a lot of times like you were bringing this out like you got you got angry, you got confused, you got, you know, you you just started doubting everything. I mean, I knew, I knew when this, I was seduced by a woman is what happened, is how it started anyway. Yeah. And I knew that, I knew that it was wrong. I said, it's demonic. That's not of it. That's it not, happens that's all the time. No, it's Bible. not demonic. It's a fine. It's not, it's okay. You know, just yeah. like Satan said to the, you know, to uh, Eve, you know, uh, who says that, you know. Who says you're going to die if you take from that fruit? Come on. You know, you're not going to die. You're good. You know, eat that thing. <laughs> That's your thing. You know what I mean? That's what she's going to make. Oh, you're okay. It's fine. You know. So then I just, it just, you just slip deeper and deeper into it. And then, you know, uh, and then that's it. You, you know, Satan yeah, puts don't a wall. So, so anyway, I woke up and then I was blown away. And um, I wrote a song. First song I wrote was called The Dream. And it was just, it's based on, there's a way that seems right, mm-hmm. you know, to a man and the end of that road is death proverbs 
something, something. I don't know. I don't remember scriptures that well, but I know what they were about. But it's Proverbs, basically. And I was like, and I just kept getting that scripture in my head over and over again. I'm like, so I wrote a song. And it's basically, it says, it's, it's about there's a way that seems right to you. you know? Right. And um, there's a way that seems right to you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh- like waking up in a dream, you think it's real until the second it's through. But where does it end? Where does it end? Where does it end? And how will you know? You know, there's a road that seems that everybody travels on. Right. It, yes, it's wide and you know, wide and something wide, but no one ever stops to read the sign. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Know? That's true. Listen, I can't remember my words. I have to sing it to remember. But anyway, so <laughs> I, asked, I just spit that out really quick. You know that song, and, mm-hmm. and then I didn't do anything else. I never, never really plan to do a Christian album or Christian music or anything. I was just like blown away by God and I was I was living in Glendale, California at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of a Sean Boltz. Do you know who Sean Boltz is? Yes. He was my senior pastor. Um, oh, wow. All t- series of events God told, God led me there and and uh, he's just I just started getting my mind blown away by, by that, that. It went in that place. Everybody was real prophetic, you know, mm-hmm. and it was amazing. Everywhere. And then I started going to conferences, Todd Wyatt, Dan Mahler, um, all kinds of conferences all over the place. And everybody kept telling me, this is going to get into the music. And everybody, <laughs> started, everybody kept prophesying over me saying, you're going to do music. God wants to do music. You're going to be amazing. You're going to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I don't want to do music. <laughs> I, I, want to, I just want to seek God. Seek first the kingdom. Seek, you know, first um, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. I mean, that's what I wanted right there. Boom. I just wanted God. Because I just did six albums. I was trying to do everything I could in the music business. It just was not happening, you mm-hmm. know? And so I was just like, you know what? I don't want to do music. I just want to know Jesus. Because I was blown away. I'm like, he's real? Now that I know he's real, I want to know Jesus. He so wanted the I'm, real deal. Yeah. And then I, so then I went on Christian Mingle because that's what you do, you know, when you get saved as a man <laughs> or a woman. And, <laughs> and you know, you go on there and you, hey, I, I got an idea. Let me get a Christian girlfriend. Right. <laughs> So I met various people, and God led me to some amazing people, actually. And this one girl lived in New Jersey. We just had made friends, and God just used her to just try to screw my head on straight, you know, because I was really kind of still pretty nuts, you know? Yeah. Still pretty rebellious and kind of like, oh, my financial things started falling apart, everything. I almost lost my house. I had a house in North Hollywood and a car, and, a car, and I got behind on my payments. And so I'm like, what's God doing? What's up? I, you know, <laughs> you know, what's yeah. the hell? Yeah. So she kept... She, would, wait, wait, she was a singer too. Every time we talked, she'd say, "Michael, get in the studio and start writing. Get in the studio right. and start writing." And I was just like, "No!" <laughs> you know, I was like, "I don't want to." No. Do that. <laughs> you know, so were you um, were you nervous about it or what? what no, I just know I know what it takes. I know what it was gonna. Ha- I know what was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, when I get in the studio, I don't come out. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, so that's the problem. It's not a bad knew, thing. <laughs> yeah, I knew, I mean, it was, it was gonna <laughs> suck at my energy and my life again. <laughs> but you're called I, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, one day I just sat. Down, I so I wrote a, a I wrote music another another song called "Who Will You Serve," which is the song I sent you, mm-hmm. and it's a song that's on the Christian Independent Radio right now too. That's but awesome. Anyway, it's just really you know you you heard, did you hear it? did you hear it? Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. really 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 it's like really progressive. That's like I mean it's like yeah. all this crazy progressive cool stuff going on in the in the context of a song, you know? Right. Which I haven't heard until like the days of Yes and days, you know, back in the day in the days of 70s and 60s and 70s when people used to mix jazz fusion with music, like Stilly Dan, you know, people like that. Yeah, the, this this song is really interesting. I'd like yeah. to share it with the audience. So sure. um, let's play this song called Who Will You Serve? <laughs> Slow boy, 
achieve their success An illusion we call being blessed But he comes to steal, kill and destroy But he came to give us his love and joy the latin beat i love the guitar work me too <laughs> it's fabulous yeah and i noticed that <laughs> i i love the um the progression like it does remind me of like the old days of progressive music mm-hmm. you know like like yes and um the bands you were mentioning and yes, you said Genesis. you play the saxophone too correct yeah, I'm playing sax on the horn section part. Yeah. That's actually kind of jazzy, too, because I play jazz. You know? Yeah. I've played everything. I've played, like, almost every kind of style of music. Roots of American music, I should say. And and European stuff, too, because I played in my father's band, like I said. He's Italian, so we played Italian music, Latin music. So my so roots are just, just – my influences are ridiculous. They're all, all over the place. <laughs> That's <laughs> Yeah, that's so good. did you did you take lessons when you were younger? Just I, mean, I, I, I just on the sax phone. Uh, I played took uh, from a jazz sax player, and then mm-hmm. I and music theory, you know, on sax, and then keyboards too. I took I studied songwriting theory and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a fun that's, piece to like you know start out with and talk about you really. Um, excuse, excuse me. I said that's a really fun piece to start oh. talking about you. I like, I like the um, whole. Yeah, I love it. Well, that's that's, what, that's the song. That's where I started. I was going to tell you the story about that. What happened is that do you want to hear? Sure. Okay, so I'm 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 finally like okay, you know, after like people from all over the country and all of the people, you know, are telling me to make music for God, right? You know, um, <clears throat> because you know, I I wasn't sure if I believed it or not. I you know, I didn't want to just uh, just. Do it. Just jump in, jump into something that you know I didn't think was of the Lord. So, um, 
I mean, anyways. So I, I sat down one day and I had I had the music to that, not even not that produced, but I had the, the guts of it. You know, I had the chorus actually. I had the uh, oh, will you sir that part, <clears throat> but I didn't have a, I didn't have the verses. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to write these verses, and if the lyrics are good, like really good. Then I'm going to take it's kind of like, it was a fleece basically. Then I'm going to take it like you want me to do this, you know, like what everybody's telling me to do, you know, like okay. make a Christian album. I thought it was going to be one album, right? Like, right. Wrong. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, if the, if the, if the words, you know, aren't good, then I'll just take it as, you know, I'm off the hook, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I wrote a verse, I wrote a verse and the words were terrible. So I'm like, awesome, I'm off the hook. And then I, then I hear, try again. <laughs> 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 so I did. And the words are, one of the verses I forget which verse but one of the verses on there and I'm like whoa and I'm like okay and then I feel this presence this presence just comes on me and it right lands on my just on me I'm on the bed you know the laptop and, mm-hmm. and I'm like ah oh, okay I guess I'm in for it so uh, <laughs> so that was basically the beginning of October of 2012 is when I started you know started just writing you know right and then it just it was just on it was on <laughs> <clears throat> just bam, 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 bam. I mean, God was downloading everything to me. I, um, <clears throat> music, guitar parts, you know, symphony parts, drums, grooves, mm-hmm. lyrics, vibes. Like, this is, should be fast. It should be upbeat. This should be a ballad. This should be chill. This should be whatever. I mean, everything. You know, mm-hmm. it was just, you know how you know that you know that you know when you're doing, when you're doing, when you're saved or when God tells you to do something? Yes. That's all it was with me. Yeah. I just you just, just can't stop. Just I just, it. it was just coming out. It was just coming right. out. You know, I was just, and I hadn't heard. I I had been. <clears throat> I just was listening to some of the stuff that was going on in the churches. You know, because twenty years ago, music was very different. Worship music was completely different. Yes. And I came from that. You know, Maranatha. You know that that kind of stuff. More musical. I hate to say it, but more musical music. You know, like more sophisticated music. And mm-hmm. I, when I went to the churches, I was like, "What happened?" You know. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, you got these two, three chord songs. Yeah. They're just kind of they're just kind of really simple and right. the lyrics are really I mean the melodies are really mono, like not a whole lot of melody, a whole lot of, a lot of I mean I came from listening to Keith Green, Phil Keggy, Petra, you know, new musicians, you know, people that can seriously play. You know, mm-hmm. insane and anointed. Yeah. And I can't <clears throat> I mean not to put down to you know, today's worship music, but it's just not my thing and it's not what I was used to at all. You know, so I was just like, what happened? You know, I was freaking out. So I just, I didn't go to church during the worship. I came afterwards and then I yeah. just went home and did music. So I didn't have anything influence me when I was writing this music. Right. Nothing Christian, nothing secular. I just, well, just we did don't what want, God, I we just don't want everybody want to be the same either. I mean, we want, excuse me? We don't want everyone to be the same either. We want variety. Exactly. And that's what people do. People, people have been copying each other, and people have been copying, and the Christians have been the music has been sure. copying the world too. Right. But we come out of the restaurant, me and my wife, and I'd be like, "Hey, Christian music," because <laughs> 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 it sounded just like what was going on in the churches, you know. So I'm like, oh, I get it. Now they're copying the world, which I know that you got people do that to a certain degree so they can appeal to the you know the masses. People of the, yeah, yeah. So, but. but but if you do it too much, it's just watered down, and it's no longer really coming from God. It's just coming from your brain, you know. Mm-hmm. And you do it for the purpose of uh, just doing it instead of being led by God and His presence and coming up with something unique. I mean, Christians should be like, you should have a sound of its own because you have Almighty God as the Creator. And if you really open up your heart <clears throat> to Him and say, "What do you want me to do?" He'll give you something that you just that would blow your mind you know yeah and if every woman was doing that in the church i mean the, the whole world would be going let's go to church i want to hear that you know well let's hear some more of your music there's a song called bless the lord um what's that song about and where did that come from okay there's a story behind that too obviously um that's beyond even the music okay my wife got got a tumor that was um that was uh, diagnosed i mean that was found in the uh, back of her ear Mm-hmm. And um, I just felt the Lord say, "I want you to just record healing scriptures." Mm-hmm. And uh, and then she's a flight attendant, so she'd be gone like three, four days a week. Yeah. And so when she's gone, she and put her on her phone, so when she's gone, she could be listening to music and speaking over herself. And I was like, "Whoa, okay." And this was happening kind of the course of the couple of weeks. I just kept turning on TV, and and you know, Pat Robertson had a healing scripture. 
you know, CD he was selling, and, mm-hmm. and then I don't know if you know, if you, I don't know if you know Sid, Sid Roth, you know, he, he was he was giving away healing scriptures, okay. and everywhere I went, people were doing this, and I'm like, okay, God, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of those, you know how he does that, how he just, yeah. kind of, you know, brings, just He's basically. Like, I want you to yeah. obey me, and you're So like, anyway, okay. I one day I woke up, and I, and I said, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm not just going to do it to, you know, just keyboard pads, I want to do it to. You know, music that's that's that moves me. So I started doing orchestral music. You know, just all orchestral music, like, like film score music. Like you know, like yeah. right now you just heard you just heard a song with orchestra in it, but this is just orchestra. Like mm-hmm. you, were, you were here in a movie, mm-hmm. and I never done it. Be- I never done it before. So I just said, "Lord help!" And I just started hitting the piano and boom. And next thing you know, all this stuff's coming out. Amazing orchestral stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. And then I I did six pieces. That's what that last piece is that you were just uh, ask, you know asking me about. That's what that is. It's all orchestral music with with scripture spoken over it. Cool. So I did that, and I, it was seventeen minutes, like you, you know, six different pieces with all scripture that I spoke. And she listened to it for two weeks solid and spoke it over her. She went back to the doctor, and the tumor was gone. Amen. And this song is called "Bless the Lord." So then. I I said, you know, we could even do music with, with the scripture like this and, you know, like songs, not right. just speaking. Right. So I wrote, I wrote Bless the Lord because it's about, you know, uh, the benefits, you know, healing and, and forgiveness and all that. And, and I wrote Bless the Lord. And that's, and that was the very first one I did. And that's one song off a worship album that I did. It's kind of a rock worship album, mm-hmm. orchestra rock worship album of all scripture. It's all scripture. That's awesome. I'm excited and, um, to hear it. So that's the first one that I did, and that's that. There it is. All right. So let's hear this song called Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits Bless the Lord Oh my soul Who forgives All my sins Bless the Lord Oh my soul Who the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, bless the Lord, oh my soul, who forgives all my sins, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, who is 
Bless God. I really love that. Was that was awesome. I love the instrumentation on that. Yeah. I mean, I, thank you. Grazie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, grazie, grazie Dio. That means uh, thank you, God, in Italian. I love it. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. You're dude. definitely an original, and I love that. You are. You are an <laughs> original, you. Mike. Um, you we're going to talk about another song called In His Presence. <laughs> well, that's actually... <laughs> is that a Michael Jackson my, song? <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. No, uh, no. Um, and that's actually an album. It's a 51-minute song. So yeah, you know, we're not, you know... But I, that's a preview that I put on my on my on my website, so you can just hear a, a taste of little a little taste of everything I do in there. It's, it's literally like nine song, little pieces. They're not songs; they're like pieces. This mm-hmm. is a soaking album, basically. It's an Love album it. to just sit before the Lord and just turn it on, and it just plays fifty one minutes straight, and it's just it's really chill and orchestral. Uh, some acoustic guitar, some electric guitar, um, piano, you know, and that's it. Very very chill, but. You don't even have to play, play all of it. You can just play a little bit of it just, just to get an idea, you know, because it's just a preview. Little, it's clips, you know, so. Okay. That's what that is. That's pretty cool because um, I, I love worship and I love um, people that take their time with worship and really um, get into just soaking. Just like you said, I love that phrase. Yeah. Um, right. That is so true. We're going to listen to a little bit of this song called In His Presence.
that's really that's really awesome. Um, so when you're doing your concerts, you play music just live in the spirit, and people are just um, just in their worship zone there, and you have a whole CD of just you in the zone, just playing different music, different <coughs> different instruments in the spirit. Is that right? Yes. When I, well, when I was doing the concerts, I would do different like themes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with those six albums. Yeah. And it would be with the rock worship, or it'd be the more Spanish guitar kind of eclectic stuff, or just a soaking album, which is me playing two electric guitar, because the guitar, soprano sax, with the tracks playing in the background, you know. Yeah. And uh, so they were just different, different, you know, um, themes for that for that night, you know, for that worship night, or you know. Right. So that's what that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, which is awesome because people can take their own message from the music and God can just kind of reach their heart. I've always loved instrumental. Oh, so much. Like even just yeah. even really old time piano music played like a hymn that it's that nobody's <clears throat> singing to, but you just know. You know what I mean? You're just listening to that. And then sometimes there'll be like a, a different way of playing it and you'll listen to it and you can just feel the spirit just all over it just moving your heart that's really awesome yeah um because we do we need to take more time to be in the presence of god so um there's a another song we want to talk about it's called on that day yeah that's the instrumental my instrumental album but the Mm -hmm. second um the second album that i did that i wrote the first one was after all these years which is with the song who we serve and that's got you know 11 songs in it all all vocal songs and then on that day is all instrumental but it actually was supposed to just be one album mm-hmm. and I had six songs six I think I had six vocal songs and seven instrumentals or something like that I forgot what it was and, and I said yeah, I'm, done, I'm done awesome and then I woke up one day with this song on that day in my head and I'm like and I just ran the studio and just boom just you know did it and then I did five instrumentals in that week like wow. that and I'm like, uh, I guess I'm doing two albums because <laughs> we can't put 20 songs in one album, right? So yeah. it ended up being a, a instrumental. So that's that song. It's called On That Day. And every song, every instrumental song on that album. So God was really putting a creative spirit in you at, at this yeah. time. Wow. And then that day, and every, every title, God would give me the title. And it was based on something biblical or something, you know, to mm-hmm. do with him. You know, Absolutely. So that, that song on that day means, you know, what it means on that day when we meet him and that day when, we, you know. The excitement, yes. On a day that God says, welcome, you know, well done. Good and faithful <clears throat> servant. Yes, I love yes, that. Yes, that one. Well done. All right, let's listen to this song called On That Day.
much fun. <laughs> I love I love the way that you phrase your guitar parts. I love the melodic structures. I was listening very closely to it and just mm-hmm. the feel and the style. I mean, oh, thank uh, you. I I just feel what you're feeling. I agree. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. What, what you, so it's uh, about it's about telling the story, no matter what you're doing, whether it's a melody, whether it's a verse, a chorus, or it's a guitar solo. Yeah. yeah. I just I just listened to guitar players from back in the day that told stories when they play when they soloed when they played. You know, it was like, you know, I, like I the love guitar it. solo, like the, the guitar solo for Hotel California. I mean that 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 yeah. the solos. It's it's a masterpiece. It's like it's a song in itself. You know. Yeah. Yes. Instead of just gibberish, you know, just playing a bunch of notes and a bunch of scales, and you know, it should be a st- to me, it should be a story. I should say something. And yeah. So that's I love, what I try. I that's that's the, what I try to do. I love your, the way you phrase things. Yeah, and not just the the, the guitar. Um, I love your saxophone too. I can really feel when you play something. It just, you know, the whole groove. I, yeah. Honestly. So do you do this in your own studio? Yeah, I do. Uh-huh. Okay. So let's talk about another song called "She Bought Me Love." This is one that you sing. <laughs> yes, that, <clears throat> that wasn't even supposed to be an album. But what happened is that about when I about two years, if I lost my voice for like two and a half years, something like that. I don't know. I mean, not completely, but in, enough where I, I was recording and I couldn't finish recording the stuff vocally. So I just I loved always. I grew up playing funk and blues on guitar you know, and sax actually and singing. So I just started doing these instrumental funky blues tunes so I can actually bring it to the gig and, and play electric guitar a little bit because I was playing just Spanish guitar for so long. I was, I was you know, desiring to play electric again. And so I did six instrumentals and I listened to them. This is, like, this is December, end of last year, mm-hmm. after finishing five albums. And I'm like, you know what? This is pretty good stuff. It's like, I'll just add four songs to it and make it an album, you know? So I added four vocal songs because I wanted some vocal in there. So this was a groove I already had. And... Um, I'm sitting there, I'm, you know, writing a melody to it, and I just kept hearing, you know, the, the words for the chorus, she brought me something, she brought me, you know, that kind of thing. And so my wife, me and my wife were sitting right there, mm-hmm. and um, and I know, oh, I did, I know, she brought me love, so I started singing the chorus, and then I, so the verses are First Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, you know, the, the love chapter, the love, you know, paragraph, love is kind, love is patient, yes. all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and only I made it more bluesy, I made it more poetic, you know, I, I, some of it's the same, love is patient, but then it gets, you'll see, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy with a roaming eye, you know, um, it's all that kind of stuff, it gets more kind of different, you know. But the choruses are just, and so what the whole song is saying is, my wife brought me love, because my when the Lord brought my wife into my life, she was the epitome of unconditional love, and he started loving me unconditionally through her, because I never experienced that, you know, as a child or ever in my life, I, I didn't even, you know, so... This Aww. song is about my. This song is about God bringing me love. <clears throat> love is kind. Love is patient. All that awesome stuff through my wife. It does not envy. Does not boast. It is not proud. It is not dishon- <laughs> dishonor others. Not self seeking. Yeah. It's not easily but, angered. But I change it a little bit. Listen, listen to it, and you'll see. It's it pretty cool. So that's what the song's no about, and it's funky, it very funky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, huh? I'm excited to hear this song called "She Brought Me Love."
Love will endure Cause it's skin is tough Love never dies It never shakes It never fails Love never fades I said she bought me something So brand new audience find you and your music michaelbatistamusic.com and that's like um, your website basically that's my website yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the M- best M- place to go find you there Michael B-A-T-T-I-S-T-A music.com awesome thank you so much yeah I didn't put any, I didn't put any of my music on iTunes or any of that stuff this time just not okay. doing that right now okay <laughs> that's good though because we want people to be able to find your music and find you if they need to um so i just want to thank you for being a guest today you had some really great stories we're gonna um be talking about this last warfare and healing song um as we we finish out the program we're gonna play it out so would you like to share something about this it's what i said earlier this is what um god had me do Mm -hmm. um for my wife to for her healing Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a spiritual warfare. Basically, it's a spiritual warfare scriptures and healing scriptures, and it's six different um, suites, you know, little little orchestral suites, like two three minute suites. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the orchestral pieces, and then I speak scripture over them. That's and, awesome. Um, that's basically what it is, and I actually do this live too. And wow. It's really really powerful. <laughs> Which is wonderful because, you know, God has healed your wife. And I've been through that, too. My husband had cancer as well, and God healed him. Um, awesome. I think that is a wonderful thing to have in your life and have someone that to stand by your side and pray with you and support you, no matter how things end up. You know, that we need to have faith and we need to have people in our life that are willing to stand by our sides through it all. And God <coughs> brings those right people into our lives. So... um 
powerful message you have and, and testimony as far as what God has done in your life. I'm excited to hear more from you, and I'm excited to hear this song called Where Warfare and Healing. Let's listen to this song. Ephesians 6, 11 through 17. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Then a woman who suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his outer robe. For she had been saying to herself, If I only touch his outer robe, I will be healed. But Jesus turning and seeing her said, Take courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And at once, the woman was completely healed. Mark 2, 9 through 12. Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up and pick up your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority and power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, Get up, pick up your mat, and go home. And he got up and immediately picked up the mat and went out before them all so that they all were astonished and they glorified and praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Yes, they were all amazed, all filled with grace. Luke 17, 11 through 15. While Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee.